Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Hero Arts, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the weaving fancy die. I'm also going to share with you a few different ideas that you can incorporate into your card making. Here is a look at the weaving fancy die. Now, when you first take a look at it, you're going to think that it only cuts out strips of cardstock, but what it actually does is creates a frame as well, which is what we need to do to do our weaving. So here I'm just using a piece of colored cardstock to really show you what this is like and it stands out on my white glass surface. Now when you run this through the die cut machine, you want to tilt it a little bit instead of putting it so it's catching that flat edge straight on. When you tilt it a little bit in your die cutting machine, it'll run through a lot easier. Once you take that out, you're going to see how nicely all of those strips just fall out and it's going to leave us with that frame and also that panel to do our weaving. So to give you an example, I am going to be die cutting this from multiple shades of cardstock. That first color of cardstock I used was Bermuda, then I did Arctic, and then this one is Paradise cardstock. I'm also going to die cut one from some white cardstock. I'm going to share with you some ideas later on in the video on what you can do with those extra panels. To do our weaving, I'm going to start on one end and literally go up and over, up and over. So we are weaving these strips of cardstock into that panel. If you want to give your card front kind of a plaid look, you could leave some space, but I'm going to push this all the way down to the bottom of my cardstock and it fits in nice and snug. Now, because that first one was over that end border, I'm going to go under and then I'm just going to weave this through. So it's every other one is going to be on top of that one strip of cardstock. Think of it as a look of like a woven basket. That's how this is going to look. Now, a couple tips that I have found while doing this as I'm completing some of these pieces is that it is a lot easier to start more towards an open area, not so close to the ones that you have pushed down. This is going to allow it to just weave in between those strips of cardstock a lot easier. I also found it a lot easier to actually push those strips of cardstock down on my panel using my thumb versus trying to take that strip of cardstock and move that. All I'm really doing is kind of gently pushing it through. I'm not going to actually bend that strip of cardstock. I really am just using my thumb to push down the ones that are already die cut out of that panel. So I wanted to have a white border towards the bottom and now I'm bringing in those different colors of cardstock. I was in a very kind of tropical mood when I was doing this so that is where I have these different shades of blue and for each one I just take it weave it in between those strips of cardstock on the panel and then push it down. Now here on the top where it's starting to get a little tight this is where you really don't want to push that individual strand of cardstock. You really want to weave it by pushing down the strips that are in that die cut panel if that makes sense because you will bend your cardstock which I had kind of started to do so I just had to be a little bit more careful. Once I had this whole panel done I noticed that I did have a little bit more white space up towards the top so all I'm going to do is just slowly push these up towards the top a little bit more. Now when these are completely done when you have a whole panel they are very snug in there. They are not going to just fall out. You could tug on it and it's really not going to move. So you could just trim off the excess at this point if you wanted to use this as a card front. And the texture feeling is really, really cool and it looks great on the back as well. So you could use any color of cardstock to do the weaving. What I think is really fun is to use ink blended pieces of cardstock. So on this four and a quarter by five and a half piece of white cardstock, I ink blended paradise ink and then I'm coming in at the top with the Bermuda and this is going to have an ombre effect. So it's going to be darker towards the top and fade off to white towards the bottom. I'm also going to do with do this with some yellow and orange. So here I believe I have lemon drop and I'm doing the same thing where I have it light towards the bottom. And then at the top, I'm coming in with, I think it was pumpkin or papaya. I think it was papaya. And I'm going to blend that into the yellow. So now I have a very tropical vibe going on. And what I'll do is I'm going to take that weaving die and die cut these panels using the weaving die. 
You could also do this by stamping backgrounds. So you could stamp a background and an entire sheet of cardstock and use the weaving die to die cut that out. Now another fun thing that I thought is you can do these diagonally. So I took one of the strips of my blue color ombre cardstock that I ink blended. I slid those in doing that same weaving technique. So it's kind of an up and down, up and down, or you know, top and bottom, however you want to label it. But once I do that, I'm just going to push them together so that they're snug and I'm leaving them at this diagonal look, which I think is a super fun look and just something really different to do with the weaving. Now, normally I would probably start towards the bottom and work my way up, but for these, I am starting in the center so that I can get my diagonal in there and then I'll fill in the rest of those spaces. So here I'm adding some of that orange and yellow to give kind of that tropical vibe. And once I'm done with these, I'll start adding in some white pieces of cardstock to fill in the rest of the space. Now, there are going to be some areas that you can't get them all the way through or through all of the areas of the weaving. And those are going to hang off, which is totally fine. But once it is all done, it is going to look kind of like a hot mess. And I'll show you what I'm going to do to kind of fix that. One of my favorite things I like to do in any card project is add a frame. So I'm using the Rectangles uh, Infinity Die, and I picked out one of them, and I'm going to die cut this from some white cardstock. I'm going to have a pretty thick white frame because I want to pop this up with some foam tape. So I'm holding that rectangle down on my four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock, and I held that down with a low tech tape to die cut out my frame. I went ahead and added foam tape behind the back of that. And now there are some areas on here that are pretty loose because I couldn't weave them through all of the areas. So this is another thing you can do is take some liquid glue and just add it behind that frame. You'll have to kind of pull up those strips just a little bit. I'm adding a dot of glue and I'm so sorry my head kind of peeks in there because I really wanted to make sure I'm getting that dot on that frame piece. And then I'll just push that down to secure those ends. Now I can take my frame, remove the backing of the foam tape, and place this over the top. And I'm so sorry, the sun all of a sudden came out and everything just kind of got blown out. So I know the colors look really light here, but you'll see how this looks better uh, in my photos at the end of the video. This frame is serving two purposes, really. It's framing the design and it's also holding all of those edges in place for me. So then I can go around and trim off that excess with my scissors. So now I have this completed card, everything is secured down, and I have this beautiful design on the front, which I'll show you how I finish that off later on. For those other card panels that I had die cut my strips from, you can actually take them and weave those into each other without even cutting them apart. So that is another fun look to create kind of this plaid look. The other thing you can do is if you need more strips, you could actually trim these strips out of that frame so you don't have to die cut multiple panels of the same color of cardstock. Here I'm going to show you how I just went around that, that edge and trimmed some of those pieces off to give me wider areas so there's more space in between those strips. And this is going to work out really well when it comes to maybe layering on top of an ink blended background or if you stamp a design in the background. All I'm going to do here is take my fingernails and kind of run across that to get rid of any paper hairs that are left over from die cutting. So this was an ink blended panel I happen to have on hand that you could place that design on top of. These are the two panels that I had ink blended and die cut from and you can layer these on top of each other. So there's lots of different ways you can use your leftover panels and also those strips. Now I'm going to show you two different examples here of my cards. So this is the one I did on screen where I did the whole background has that weaving in it. This other card here, the one I'm going to actually show you in a picture, I didn't fill in the rest. I only used my ink blended strips. Now to finish that card off, I have some dies here that I ink blended from the Sea Creatures set and a sentiment from the Everyday Sentiment Strips. Here is a better look at that card that I finished off where I didn't finish weaving the background. So you can leave those areas open and this weaving looks so cool in person. Another card that I happen to do off screen is I did some ink blended panels and I die cut them multiple times 
wove those into the background, and then I die cut a heart from a panel of white cardstock, and that way I'm framing that woven pattern in the background. Now this one I completed by stamping and die cutting a sentiment from the Beautiful Day stamp set and finishing it off with another skinny sentiment from the Everyday Sentiment Strips. My last card here that I'm going to show you, I had to of course fit in a rainbow and this time I did that kind of in a big block strip in the center. I did finish off the background with white weaving so it was a complete woven look and then once again added a frame but that time it was a little bit skinnier so I could fit in as much of the color as possible. I finished this card off with a small sentiment from the everyday sentiment strips and then also the luggage lowercase alphabet die. So I hope this has helped you give you an idea of how to use this weaving die and inspiration to go with it. It is a very versatile set that can be used year round. To see all of these pictures you can visit the blog which will be linked down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great rest of your day.